Hey guys, Big Rob Make Beer Easy. Today we're going to talk about how to add gelatin to your beer in order to get it nice and clear. Oh, kind of rhymed. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Alright, so one of the uh, ways that I, uh, I, I like clear beer. I like my beer clear. I'm not into the hazy, cloudy, you know, fad. I can't call it fad anymore. It's been here so long. I think it's here to stay. Um, sure, I like an, any IPA from time to time, but if it's not in New England, then I want my beer clear. And I go through different processes. Um, I'll actually put a link under this video to two things. Number one, I'll put a link to um, all the different methods I use to clear my beer, okay? Um, number two is I'll put a link to the blog post that corresponds with this video about how to use gel because that's what we're talking about specifically today. In my kegerator here, I have a, um, oh, probably about six gallons of a English pale ale ready to go, cold crashing. Okay, so I put that in, for, that's number one, you want a cold crash. Um, I put the keg, sorry, the fermenter into the kegerator 24 hours ago. Okay, so there's two, number one, there's two ways you can use gelatin. Number one is you can put it into your fermenter. Number two is you can put it in directly into your keg. So if you're bottling, you're gonna have to use the fermenter, clearly, okay? If you're kegging, you can use the keg, okay? Nine times out of 10, I'll do it in the fermenter. Um, some people claim that when you're carbonating in the, in the keg, the CO2 doesn't allow the gelatin to, work its magic as much. Um, at my brew pub that I own, we use corny kegs, they shit tons of them, and some of the guys that brewed there with me, they would they would use the gelatin in the kegs, no problem at all. I've used it in the keg, no problem at all. So I don't buy into that the CO2 kind of affects the gelatin. Um, so having said that, I still do it in the fermenter, I just find it easy. So that's what we're gonna do today. Number two, um, well, the first step, I should say, regardless of how you're going to do it, is you want to get the beer cool, okay? Some people make the mistake of putting the gelatin into the fermenter before they put it into the kegerator or the fridge or wherever you're cold crashing your beer, whether you're putting it outside. It's cold enough. You used to do that up here in Canada certain times of the year. Just toss it outside for a couple days. Um, don't put it in before. Don't put it in while the beer's warm, okay? Put it in. Put the fermenter or the keg away for at least 24 hours, 48, um, if, if, if it's going to take that. Whatever it takes to get the beer down to fridge temperatures, okay? Um, so I find 24 hours is just fine for me. We get her down to, uh, or, or right now we're sitting at about 4 degrees Celsius, which is which is fine. I've got the ink bird and it kind of bounces around a little bit, but somewhere down around. Works great, okay? So what you're going to need, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, why don't I bring them to you? Uh, a couple things. First of all, good old gelatin. This, you just pick this up at the grocery store. Knox gelatin. Um, it's, uh, I think this is like four bucks and gave me a four pack uh, of, of the goods. So you get that in a grocery store. Um, you're going to need a thermometer because you want to get the, the water temperature right. You want it to be about 150 degrees. Um, before, that's, that's where you want to pitch your pitch your yeast, pitch your gelatin, put the gelatin into your bowl. So you want to, you want to be able to check the temperature. This is all filled with star sand, so we're sanitizing. Um, you can actually see the pot. I'm boiling water over there because I'm not using um, sterile water from the store. I got it right out of my tap. I got a well, so I'm boiling it, make sure it's extra sanitary. Not gonna get any little bugs and stuff, little bacteria into my beer. Um, I, uh, I got my scissors that I'm going to cut the, um, the, the package of gelatin. They're in here sanitizing. I've got my spoon that I'm gonna stir up. That's a fork, Rob. Got the fork that I'm going to stir the gelatin, mix it up with to dissolve it. Okay, all sitting in the star sand. Um, measuring, and then I got my little bottle of star sand here. The foam, don't fear the foam, man. Stuff's good for you, not really, but it's good for your beer. Got a measuring cup, because what we're gonna do is we're going to, and that's where I needed the spoon. I knew I needed the spoon. So what we're gonna do is one teaspoon. Spoon into the sanitizer. One teaspoon of gelatin per five, six gallons. 
of beer is what I what I do. Some people have seen, I've seen some people tell them they're half a teaspoon um, and you use a quarter cup of water. I do one teaspoon for five to six gallons of beer and I use one cup of water at 150 degrees. Okay, so the process involved here, number one, if you were, if you, there's, there's, you gotta heat up the water. Okay, so if you were using store-bought and sterile water, um, you can you can still heat it up on your on your stove. Get your thermometer out and just check, dip her in and check. Once you get 150 degrees, you're good to go. Okay. Um, another method is some people will um, put it in the microwave. The water, get a cup of water, put it in a microwave-safe container. Put it in slow increments 30 seconds whatever i've never done that i don't do that i heat it up on the stove but you know 30 second increments check it you know get up to the 150 stir up the gelatin okay so what i'm doing is i'm boiling because i want the, i want it sanit i want the, the water to be um, sanitized you know we're, we're killing off anything that might be in it even though i'm sure the water's great I'm not taking any chances at that point this point in the brewing process we are not going to ruin my beer so um, that's what we're doing. So what I'll do then is I will take that off once it's up boiling. I'm gonna put some tin foil over it and uh, I'm gonna let it drop down to 150 and then I'm gonna come back and uh, I'll show you. I'll show you the beer and then I'll show you me uh, mixing into the gelatin. So stay tight, we'll be right back. Yeah. All right, guys, we are there temperature wise. Um, so it's cooled down to 150, 150, 155 is fine Fahrenheit. Just take your little thermometer and Give her a double check. Not a big deal. Um, you're just looking to, to melt the, uh, dissolve the gelatin. Yeah, we're done right there. She's actually starting to drop. Um, get your, get your uh, trusty measuring cup out. Get the star sand out of it. Self your packet of gelatin. So you'll be able to use one packet a few times. Um, just I just put it into a Ziploc bag when I'm done and put it in the old fridge. Got top off sanitized scissors. Get your spoon. Get your old star sand offer. Star sand won't hurt it. So you want one teaspoon. There we go. I go a little heavier than I, I know some. Some home brewers do. We probably get we probably get about two 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 teaspoons out of a pack. That's what it, what it looks like. And then we want one cup. I like burn my leg off. Some people like to say they'll use a quarter of a cup. Others others will use a little more than a cup, as I just did there, but uh, pretty dang close. So it looks like guys. Then you just stir it up till it's nice and dissolved, and then. Um, we will come back and uh, I'll get one of my daughter's assistants to video record, hold the camera as I show you the actual dia and uh, we'll get this in, we'll get this into the fermenter and get her cold ration for another, eh, I don't know, probably 48 hours. I'm gonna let this sit, I'll probably today, Saturday morning. I'll probably keg this beer on, eh, maybe tomorrow, we'll see, probably Monday though. That's it. Just want to make sure she's all dissolved up. So we'll be, we'll be right back and get this bad boy into the fermenter. Yeah. Action! My daughter's recording. Say hi, Brie. Hey, girl. Oh! Alright, come on over here and show them the, the beer there, Marie. That's the, um, that's in the Spidel. That is a English pale ale I brewed, um, two weeks ago. Um, it's the cold crash for 24 hours. Show them the, uh, ink bird contraption on the wall. This is... This is the ink bird um, down here in Albury. So what I do is I run the um, the um, sensor into water so that that um, gives a better um, representation of the temperature in the actual beer versus the the space. Um, and I set it at four. You get getting getting my big self self in your brain. Can they see me? Yes. Hey, all right. Um, Cause I got important stuff to say. So what was I saying? Um, oh, I set the ink bird at 4 degrees Celsius um, with a variance of, I think, 1.5, so it'll fluctuate. Works well. Okay, so we got our uh, gelatin. She's all dissolved up. do not matter. Get rid of that spin. You over here watching, Brie? Mm -hmm. So I put, when I, so one of the things you got to do is when you cold crash, this isn't a cold crash video, but I'll give you a little extra tip. 
is uh, you gotta get the airlock out of it or it's gonna suck the star sand bug or whatever water that you've got in the airlock into the beer. Are you watching it, Bray? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you take your, I, I use a tin foil cover. Try to get it off of there. Just to, I don't wanna reuse it, so I don't wanna drop it. Okay, so here we go. The simple matter of pouring it in, this is, this is live action. This is, this is very exciting. Look at that riveting. Yeah, every last drop in there. Get her sealed bag up real quick so we don't oxygenate the beer. Back to me. All right. So, um, like I say, you want to you want to leave that in there for at least twenty four hours. So um, that's it. That's how you, that's how you use gelatin to clear beer, guys. And um, tune in for the taste test. I'll put the taste test video um, link once it's done under this this video so that um, you can see how clear the beer turns out. I have my daughter's laughing at me for some reason. I didn't tell a joke. I don't know what's so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more brewing tips, recipes, good fun, and like the video if you liked it. If you didn't, well then don't. <laughs> Stop comment down below, guys. I always love hearing from you. That's it. Big round is it.